Hi, how you doing? Today we're going to talk about one of the most fundamental aspects of any grappling art that includes submissions. Tapping. So just like always, I want to start off by giving you a little context. Obviously this is a subject that crops up whenever anyone new to catch comes along, and more and more often I find myself grabbing trial class people when they come along to Jiu Jitsu, so the discussion around tapping is one I've had many times. I figured that if I was having this conversation the likelihood was that lots of other people were too. And if that was the case, then having a short video that talks about why we tap, when we tap, and how we tap might be a useful thing for people new to, or even simply considering trying grappling. So let's start with why we tap. It feels like it should be a really simple question to answer, but in reality there are several reasons we might tap, depending on the situation. Let's start with drilling. When you and your partner are drilling a technique, you're both trying to improve your level of ability with that specific technique, and so there needs to be both a degree of trust, but also of honesty between the pair of you. The person putting on the technique trusts that you'll let them know when it's correctly applied and on, so to speak, so they can learn how it feels to get it right. But you, the person on the receiving end, need to trust that your partner will release the pressure when you let them know it's on, hence the tap. There's no urgency, just acceptance of the fact that it was right, and now they can do it again. So tapping early when drilling can be counterproductive. If you never let your partner get the technique fully on, then they never learn how it feels to correctly apply it, and then they're far less likely to get it during a live roll. The lack of trust that they would actually release the second you tapped stopped them from learning. So in this instance, the tap's simply a way of communicating that something's being done correctly. But when you're rolling, things can get a little different. Sometimes you'll be in a situation where you know a technique isn't being quite applied properly, and that you don't actually need to tap. You effectively find yourself in a drilling-like situation as they search for the correct position and application, but sometimes a move will go on quickly and the tap is much more important. It's that signal that they got it, and they need to stop now before they break you. Which, of course, leads on perfectly to the next aspect, which is how to tap. If you spend any time in jiu-jitsu or catch wrestling, you'll undoubtedly come across hundreds of variations of tapping, but some basic rules should apply. Always tap on the person applying the move, if possible. When you're rolling in a busy gym with people talking, other people possibly tapping, music playing in the background and all the normal noise of a busy club, it can be really easy to miss someone tapping on themselves or on the mats. So if there's any option, make sure that your partner can feel the tap and that they don't have to listen for it. But of course, there are times when perhaps your hands are otherwise occupied. Maybe they're completely controlled and you can't physically tap. Or perhaps you're using all of your strength resisting a move, and you know that if you let go, that sub's going to go on hard, possibly injuring you. In either of these situations, obviously you can't just tap. Some people will say tap with your feet, but to me I would always suggest that this is a last resort. Not only will that be on the mats and not your opponent, but it'll likely be out of their field of vision and not something that they're looking out for. So just say tap. A verbal tap is perfectly acceptable and often the safest way. There are a few more short things I need to say before we wrap this up. The first is that tapping is really important. Not just for you, to keep you safe, but also for your training partner. No one wants to injure the people they train with, so don't let your ego stop you from tapping. We've all met that person, the one that simply won't tap, however much you hurt them, and in the end, you choose not to injure them and let the move go. They go away happy that they're so tough that you couldn't beat them. The problem with this is if they don't stop, eventually they're going to get injured, potentially seriously. And then you've got one person now injured and another who feels really very guilty. So try to remember that over your time training you will tap thousands of times. And you'll make people tap thousands of times. It's not a big deal. Just move on. Do it again. It's part and parcel of training. But also, the converse of this is also important. When someone taps to you, don't make it more than it is. Maybe it's the first time you've caught that person but try not to make a big deal about it. Perhaps they were going easy on you. Perhaps they were working on their defence and had just had enough. 
Perhaps you genuinely caught them, and now you're all set to be the next Gordon Ryan. Either way, just move on. Don't be a bad loser, and don't be a bad winner. Tapping's a tool. Use it wisely, and it'll help you improve. Use it badly, or don't use it at all, and in reality, you're not going to be in the sport for very long. So over to you. Did I miss anything important? Stick something in the comments and let me know. And to those of you still here, at the very end of the video, fight team.